Hey guys, Tony here. Uh, and I'm back to do something that I've been meaning to do for quite a while now. That is to make a start a series of videos. Um, basically devoted to a video each devoted to one record. Um, and sort of call it, you know, obviously, my record collection. Um, parts one, two, three, and so forth. But yeah, but, but just to feature one specific record and sort of talk about that one record as much as I can. I mean, I don't, I can't really consider myself a reviewer of music, but speak to that record as, uh, as much, as best as I can and sort of talk about, maybe give it some historical context and maybe talk about my copy and a little bit about that. Um, just as a way really to make videos, to be sort of more active uh, making videos and to get to know my own collection a little bit better. I've been trying to think of a way to make, make videos other than new vinyl finds, which only happen every so often, you know, and also as a way to just get better acquainted with my own collection. Um, so often it happens that I buy a stack of records and, you know, the only time I have is to listen to these new records and I don't get to go back and revisit as much as I would like to. Um, so as a way of doing that, figured I'd make one one to two of these a week and speak about one record and you know obviously listen to that record a little bit and maybe do a little research on it before I make a video so my first one here that I want to do has become I've maybe discovered this album maybe a year ago probably a little bit less and it has quickly become one of my all-time favorite records I absolutely love this album and as you can probably already tell from the title and if you could hear the music and know it, you know, in the background. I'm talking about Roy Harper's, um, what is widely considered his masterpiece, Stormcock, from 1971. And this is his fifth album. And, yeah, totally considered his best record. Um, I haven't heard a lot of his material. He's got a bunch of albums. This is the one I've really listened to the most, and I gotta say, this album just blows me away. It continues to. Um, it's in constant rotation. I have it on my iPod, and I always go back to it. I mean, I, I definitely listen to it at least once a week. And um, it's gotten to be like, I gotta stop listening to it so much because I'm gonna wear it out. And I don't want to because I love the record so much that... Words don't do it justice. It never will. Just hearing it. You gotta hear it. Um, sadly, though, it is still very obscure. Um, other than by people who know Roy Harper or, you know, know, know their stuff in regards to music. I would say the general populace do not know this record. Never heard of it. And I gotta thank Big Star 1000 for turning me on to this. Because... This is just an awesome record. Um, four tracks, okay? It's sort of uh, considered, you know, progressive folk. Or, you know, four long epic folk songs. It sort of rides the line. It's compared a lot to albums like Led Zeppelin IV or Pink Floyd's Metal. But I may go so far to claim that this is actually better than those two albums. Um... It's it's really a crime that this album isn't isn't better known. Okay, it is just phenomenal. Um, the thing about Roy Harper that's always appealed to me too, and I read about Roy Harper long before I actually heard him. Reading when I was a kid, reading about Led Zeppelin, and you know Roy Harper and Jimmy Page were close friends. You know, um, but Roy Harper always man always sort of managed to sort of straddle that line between the sort of rock scene, you know, the Led Zeppelins and the Pink Floyds, and sort of also stay in the UK folk scene with, you know, bands like, you know, Burt Yonch, Pentangle, Fairport Convention, you know. I consider him more UK folk, uh, but he has more rock leanings, I think, in later albums, too. But, yeah. Stormcock. I bought this, 
uh, I don't know, like I said, maybe about a year ago, a little less. And I actually only paid about, maybe about $25 for it. It tends to go for a little bit more than that now. This copy is, other than the ring wear there, it's a textured cover. It's an original UK press on Harvest. But other than that ring wear, everything else about it is mint. Um, so for the price I paid and everything, and there is a clip corner there. But other than that, the record is absolutely pristine. It is a gatefold. Very thin cover has, you know, imports tend to have from this time. Um, and it is on harvest. Okay, so the music, again, acoustic guitar, okay? But there's a lot of other little things going on there. Um, but largely driven by, you know, acoustic. Um, there's little touches of color, you can hear maybe a hint of a keyboard, um, little, little things, it's, it's strange. Um, some studio effects, but then the last track, I'll go in order actually, Hors d'oeuvres, which is playing right now, it's a really interesting song and I want to say, to me it makes me think, I never really looked up what it's about, but it makes me think of people... The chorus basically basically is, and I love this line, it's, you know, you could lead a horse to water, but you'll never make him drink. And you could lead a man to slaughter, but you'll never make him think. Um, to me, it just, that's what the song's about. Um, people not being able to really think for themselves. He talks a little bit about, in the lyrics, about how a critic, he talks about this critic, who's obviously writing about Roy Harper, and saying this singer is much too crude, and, and it's, this singer's just a farce. So he's really criticizing Roy Harper. And, and then that line, you'll never make him think, just really, you know, he's really sort of ranking on this, you know, critic. You know, something about, he's, you know, strains his, he rakes his, I forget the words, but rakes his poor brain, strains and farts, and he thinks in terms of, of booze and tarts. Um, but yeah, it does, it's just about that. How he, and the, he doesn't think this little song is going to make the charts. You know, Roy Harper was never really that successful during his time. He wasn't famous on the level of uh, Jimmy Page, you know. But still, just fantastic. But that it started out that first song, Our Dirts, was my favorite. Um, and then it's changed to The Same Old Rock. The Same Old Rock actually features Jimmy Page. He takes his solo on there, and it is just, like, mind-blowingly good. The same old rock is basically, I've read about this one, and you really got to interpret the lyrics. His writing on here, it's very, it's very poetic. Here's the song now. But it's basically about organized religion, and just some of the most brilliant lyrics written, in my opinion, it's just fantastic. Um, but yeah... Towards the end of the song, I want to say, um, maybe maybe about three quarters in, there's just this guitar solo by Jimmy Page, and he's not credited on the album, just for contractual reasons. Um, but you could tell it's him. If you know, you know Jimmy Page's guitar style, and it's just like mind blowing. Let me see if I could find that real quick, if you don't mind. It's mind blowingly good. Right here. Anyway, so yeah, that song was my favorite for a while. But then my favorite became the last song, Me and My Woman, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, there's an or It's orchestrated. There's this orchestra, very lush sounding orchestra. And the thing about it is it's like all these different, it's like all these different sort of songs that, you know, very sort of familiar. 
you know, like a folky, bluesy, I'm not a musician, so, you know, but all sort of put together. So it's like a, it almost seems like different songs put together. And it is absolutely phenomenal. It gives me chills. It's also very English. One thing about this album, too, is it's very English. And it's totally part of its charm. It is just, you hear it, the lyrics, you just know this guy's from, from the UK. Um, and I love it for it. It's just one of those albums. Me and My Woman is just, to me, it's, it's, I think the title speaks for itself. Um, again, some of the best lyrics written. Um, but yeah, during its time though, this album, it didn't sell a lot. Roy Harper even said, you know, the company hated it. The record company, I guess EMI, Harvest, Harvest, they hated it. There was no backing. Um, they didn't promote it and it just didn't sell. Um, it's just, you know, one of those things. And, and it sort of got a later life, if you will. Um, championed by a number of musicians, Johnny Marr. Um, I want to read a quote actually by Johnny Marr from the Smiths, <clears throat> and I think it you know sums it up pretty well. Um, he says, "If there was ever a secret weapon of a record, it would be Stormcock. I don't know why it's such a secret. If anyone thinks it might be a collection of lovely songs by some twee old folky, then they'd be mistaken. It's intense and beautiful and clever." Um, David Bowie's "Honky Dory's." bigger, badder, older brother. Um, so that's pretty much his quote. So, you know, it was championed also by uh, Joanna Newsom, who, you know, was a big Roy Harper fan. And she was asked to go on tour. And she said, I guess she would only tour if, if Roy Harper opened for her and played Storm Cup. And they asked him, and he did. And he opened for her. Uh, in her album, I always forget how to pronounce it. It's like eyes, A's, something like that. It's a big, you know, totally influenced by Stormcock and that it's like four or five long you know acoustic tracks uh, I knew before I even heard the album just looking at it before I bought it that you know it obviously Stormcock you know it just reeked of it uh, in that it's also very English the long tracks sort of epic stuff but yeah also Robin Pecknell of the Flea Foxes loves it stated he took inspiration from Stormcock and recording Helpless Since Blues. Such a great album, and it really is such a crime that it's not up there with a Honky Dory or a Pink Floyd metal. Or, um, but in a way, I, in a way, I admit I sort of like that. It's not so well known that it's not played on classic rock radio or anything. I mean, the songs are probably too long for these days, but such a great album. The track I like the least, and it, I, I still love it. It's not. It's a great song, but compared to the other three, it's one man rock and roll band. Um, it's sort of a. It's sort of. I want to call it almost a blues. It's. It's really good, but it just doesn't have the, sort of the weight that the other three tracks do, if you will. Um, let's see if I can find that real quick. One man rock and roll band. It's also the shortest track, but. It's it's really, you know, still a great track, but those other three, hors d'oeuvres, the same old rock, and me and my woman, just, it's for me, just totally make this record. And do check it out if you don't have it. I know it's been talked about a bit in the community, but this is one really that everybody should own if you can find it. Um, like I said, if you look hard enough, you can find a copy. I didn't want to pay a lot, you know, if I could find it for cheap, obviously. So yeah, I think I paid about 25 bucks for this, and for the ring wear and everything, just totally worth it, you know, and I'm just really happy to own it, so there you go, you know, hopefully that wasn't too painful, do check this record out, I'm telling you, you won't regret it, um, buy it, download it, give it a few listens, I'm telling you, it's fantastic, so there you go, leave me some comments guys, have a good one.